Hey, it's Roy Hill with Brownells, and today we're going to talk about remilitarizing a Mauser Sporter. Now, for many years, something that was very common with, with, for people to do is take a military surplus Mauser rifle, and here's my Mauser. This is one I remilitarized. So they would start off looking something like this, and then because surplus military Mausers on the U.S. market were very plentiful and very cheap, folks would take these and chop the stock and maybe shorten the barrel and remove the military sights and turn them into a deer gun. I mean, for, for a long time, that actually made economic sense because you could get the, get the rifles for so cheap they could put a little bit of work and some and pieces, parts, and some tools, you could come out with a deer rifle and come out ahead if, as opposed to going to the store or gun store somewhere just buying yourself a bolt-action rifle. In fact, for many years, uh, a large part of Brownell's business was to sell the stocks, the uh, bolt shrouds, the uh, tools, the chemicals, the slings, all the things that people needed to sporterize military Mausers. Now, of course, over the years, the supply of surplus military Mausers has kind of dried up, and folks are now putting a higher premium on original condition type Mausers. And what I decided to do was to get a military Mauser that had been sporterized and then remilitarize it. So, this is what I wound up with, but I want to show you what it sort of looked like before I started the process. So I got on a uh, gun auction website and I was looking for a Mauser 98. The reason I was looking for a Mauser 98 is because Brownell sells a Mauser 98 wooden stock made by Benelli in Italy. It's made out of walnut, it's absolutely gorgeous, and it's to redo a Mauser or to, into a military configuration or to replace a really worn out military stock. So I had the stock to do it, so I was looking for the correct donor rifle so I could remilitarize it. And what I found was a CZ-98K, and based on the serial number and the markings, it was probably made about 1946, 1947, just after World War II. So it wasn't a German one, it wasn't a, a Wehrmacht Mauser, but it was made it to the exact same pattern, and it started off when I received it from the FFL wearing this thing. This looks like it was probably the original stock that's had some homemade gunsmith stuff done to it. It's got some, uh, I don't know if you can see that kind of clumsy uh, checkering done there. Uh, they took the uh, takedown disc out and then spliced in this little rectangle of wood. There's one on either side right there where the takedown disc would have been. And then also there's this funky, sort of like a fish-shaped arrow thing or something, some sort of inlay that somebody had, had, had cut and put into the side of the stock, and of course they chopped the front end off, etc. But other than that, the metal was perfectly intact, had a good finish, and it still had the original military sight. So this was a very, very simple remilitarization project. Now again, I wanna be real honest here. I'm not a gunsmith. I don't even play a gunsmith on TV or in video. So I was looking for a very, very easy, easy project, and, and this is what turned out. So I got the barreled action, the sights, I already had this lovely Manelli stock from Brownells, so all I had to do to really remilitarize this was go find the other pieces that were missing. The barrel band, uh, the bayonet lug in the front band, uh, a steel butt plate. I had to go find one of those for the stock. I had to get the takedown discs. And the only really gunsmithy thing I had to do a little bit was several of these extra pieces parts, and I, I found these on several different websites. Uh, were not real good shape, so I cleaned them up with some steel wool, I degreased them, and then I oxfo blued them, okay? For example, this front band, I don't know if you can get a close look at that, this front band when I started was pretty much gray. It was, it was really light gray, and you just spread that oxfo blue on there and let it set, and the longer you let it set, the darker it gets, so I blew that, uh, I blew this band, and then the other thing I blued, and I think I did a pretty good job of it, with, with Oxo Blue is pretty easy to use, is the butt plate. The butt plate was not good condition at all. That's why I got it for like four bucks. I even had to find the butt plate screw. The only other part that was even really challenging, and my good buddy, uh, you've probably seen him on some of the Brownells videos, Keith Ford, Gun Tech Keith Ford, uh, went over to his house and I had the uh, takedown discs we put them in there, we had the little piece of tubing that connects them, and all we had to do was use an expander and a jack press and just press in that side, and then of course flip it over and press in that side so the mouth of the tube expanded and we've got a real nice tight friction fit. A couple other things about this Mauser, I mean it says right here on the receiver, you don't have to wonder if it's Czechoslovakian, it, it, says, it says CZ right there, 
right there on the side. Obviously check. It did have the lion crest that's since gone. And then another telling uh, piece is this winter trigger guard, as it's sometimes called, this kind of funky, expanded looking trigger guard, which is really only seen on post-World War II Mausers, typically made in, in, Czech, in the Czech Republic or today or Czechoslovakia. But it was a neat project. I, I'm, I'm really proud of the way it turned out. The other thing I had to do, and you'll have to do this if you use a Manelli stock, is I had to get some, some stock finishing oil. And so this has got like uh, six or seven coats of that stock finishing oil. And of course, let's show right here. It's got just some just lovely grain here on, on the stock. So after I got everything put together and made sure everything fit and got all the pieces part, then I took the barrel action out again and then applied about six or seven coats following the instructions for the uh, stock oil and then gave it a good, nice rub down so it's got a nice sheen to it. This is a really fun gun to shoot. Um, it looks the part. It's not a Wehrmacht or a World War II Mauser. It looks the part close enough for me. And for not much money, I've got historically correct looking Mauser 98. Now I've got another Mauser here on the table that I just picked up recently at the Brownells retail store. And this is a Chilean model 1935 and seven millimeter Mauser. And you can see all the parts that are going to be in common. This has got a slightly different handguard because it's got that extra wood at the back of the handguard that my uh, Mauser 98 uh, check doesn't have. But as you can see, overall, it's more or less pretty darn close with all the configurations and pieces you would expect from a Mauser 98. But there's a lot of sporterized Mausers out there. If you would like, it's a great project, it's fun. Go find yourself a sporterized Mauser and see if you can bring it back to life. So this is Roy Hill. If you've got questions about this project, please leave us some questions below the video and we'll see you next time.